football team. Buses run every 10 minutes. Avoid the traffic. Don't get stuck in the delay. Get Ipswich buses today. A single from only £1.20, a return from only £2. Find out more information at www.ipswichbuses.co.uk. Ipswich Buses, proud to partner with Talking Town. Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and it is midday on Saturday, the 16th of April. We are half an hour away from kickoff at the New York Stadium. Ipswich Town versus Rotherham is today's action. Cruncher says, come on, you blues, all the way from the tractor as he finishes off. And make sure you clock out tonight. Crunch, make sure you clock out. Uh, we've got Heidi, we've got Lee in the chat. I'm going to drop a poll in a second, asking you what you feel about today's game. Are we going to win? Are we not going to win? What's your score going to be? Uh, joining me as uh, for the first time, I believe, this year on the match day ticket is, of course, the media mogul, Mr. Matt Phillips. Is How you doing? Your maiden match day ticket of the so. I can't remember. It's been a long campaign. I can't remember. It's been an incredibly, I've incredibly in a few long times, campaign. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, an incredibly long campaign. Obviously, yeah. team has already graced yeah. our social media. I will have it on the screen now, but. Let's discuss it. So, a bit, I suppose the big talking point, as as they've put by the picture of the team news, is yeah. Elkin Wagger making yeah. the starting eleven. What's your thoughts on on that one, then, Mister? I mean, look, we kind of we kind of debated this last night, didn't we? Would he get Would he get the nod? And he has. Um, fantastic. He's. We saw him. Was it in the Papa John's last season against Gillingham? I think it was. We did yeah. Um, we're all the youngsters impressed in that game. Now, was that the one where Dobra got the worldie? I think it yes, was. I think it was. Uh, and he impressed in that game. So let's say, I mean, obviously this is going to be different. Packed house at Rotherham, a team trying to get automatic still. So he's going to go, it's going to be a bit of a cauldron for him. But as we were sort of saying last night, you've got so Penny's come out of the side and Thompson's on the left. So clearly, clearly the McKenna sees that Thompson is going to have a bit more of a, a uh, an experienced head for him, maybe in terms of guiding him through the game. So he'll need Wolford to his right and, and whoever's on the left to, to help him through. Yeah, absolutely. I, I said on last night's show that I don't think McKenna is the type of manager, particularly where he's come from, to shy away from putting a young player who he feels right. is ready into the lineup. He's a, a manager, I believe, will look to develop the player, looks to, to, to further his development. And when he is ready, have no reservations. And as we see today, away on the TV, against a side who need a win to yeah. maintain the pressure on MK Dons in, in, in that race for automatics, and he's starting in uh, the lineup. Um, what's the what's, what's the sort of best case for, for Elkin today? Obviously, mistake free football. Are you, are you expecting big things? Looking forward to seeing what he brings to the left side of the back three. He, he's a bit of a okay. I say this morning anomaly for a young player in that. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Played international football before he's actually made first team starts for us, albeit in for Indonesia. And obviously, that's probably slightly different level of World Cup qualification and that kind of thing. But, I mean, mm -hmm. no, he's still... And he's a big star. We know he's a big star there. Hasn't he got the biggest social media following out of all the Switch squad, I think? On yeah, Instagram. I believe he has. Yes, yeah. So, I just hope... I'm fingers crossed. I hope he has a, a good game, a mistake-free game, hopefully. Because you know what sometimes the Switch fan base can be like on social media. Oh, no, blame again, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah. It'd be very yeah. Me, it'd be very interesting to see how, how this debut goes and whether or not he would maybe feature in subsequent games... And then we've got Wigan, we've got Crew, and we've got Charlton. So we'll count down towards the end of the season. Because we do know that Burgess hasn't featured much this season. People were worried that maybe Championship clubs were looking at Edmondson until he got mm -hmm. injured. Yep. Could, could he feature towards the end of the season and suddenly be springboard into McKenna's thinking for next season? It could happen. It could happen. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the party. I do also believe... That if he, you know, he he is now going to have a run of games. If if he, perform, you know, can can obviously come in and 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 be as ready as as maybe McKenna and Co. believe he is. It's a great yeah. boost of confidence to him. It's a great start to make your if just down yeah. career, your debut at league football. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm a bit more relaxed. I think it's the first match day ticket. I'm really quite relaxed because the sun is shining. Tesco is heaving, but we'll ignore that. Uh, and, and it doesn't mean. 
it doesn't mean as much today, you know, like for us, from no. our point of view, it's about building blocks for next year. Can we maintain yeah. The, yeah. the work rate? Can we maintain the desire? Can we maintain dominance against a side that is a measuring stick at this level for so many different reasons? It's a good test today. It's a good test. And for all those reasons you say, plus we could be playing these again next season. If their wobble continues, like we said on the show last night, they haven't won at home since the 15th of March. And I think they made a few changes today. We've got Matt Smith up top. I think um, the other lads on the bench are, dep are depot. Um, depot yeah. So, yeah, this could easily be a, a, a team that we play next season. So it is a good measuring stick, as you, as you say. Um, it's just a shame, isn't it, we're not in the mix. Sky obviously, Sky obviously picked this game thinking that we could maybe in a, with a chance of sneaking six today. And Rotherham could go top or get back into the automatics and that. So we've kind of ruined their narrative a little bit. But McKenna is a professional. We've got professional players. We've got very experienced players. This won't be on the beach time. It will be like you say. Hopefully it will be all guns blazing. And can we get the same kind of dominance we had against Shrewsbury last week? The 600 passes. We just need the cutting edge to... To get to get the three points, don't we? Rather than settle for points. Yeah, yeah, I do agree with the narrative. We've only got ourselves to blame because four points from Cambridge and Shrewsbury, which I, I believe Sky, when they're looking at the fixture list, would have looked at and said, "Well, that's you know, that's that's two wins for a, for a team in form at the time as Town and was." Prior, and prior to the Cambridge game as well, I think it was advertised as, of which of course we lost. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, we, you, if you if you have those four points in your back pocket, then today you could go within three points of the playoffs. So yeah, it's, yeah. it would have been that sort of thing that, that, that Sky and so I were looking for. Sam Parkin in the studio for Sky. So that's no. a reason to watch Talking Sam this afternoon, if you, didn't, if you never knew <laughs> one. He got um, mentioned last night as well, didn't we? When I said he did. Good, good old good. Sammy Parkin. Graham yeah. Tate, came out keeping the faith with James Norwood. Yeah, James Norwood back in the... Well, still in the lineup. Yeah. Seen a couple of people on social media today about activating clauses. Not quite, I don't think we're quite there yet, but... So he's, what do you he's think? I keep I get lost in all this. We do so many shows, don't we? So I'm right. Our I think con contract is over, but there's an extension there there's an for extension. a year. Which, knowing how they operated last year in terms of activation to sell, I to do sell. believe it will be activated just to see if we can retain some transfer value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's another opportunity for James Norwood, the player, to show Kieran McKenna, the manager, why he should be more than just an activation yeah. to sell. Yeah, I mean, I've been contemplating this since this team was announced. I do wonder if there's an argument now to think that McKenna might want to keep Norwood. I mean, he keeps featuring. What's the, the argument? One player, the one player he's got under contract actually is a proper striker that's fit, got two, three-year deal, whatever, Piggott, still is on the bench. Now, whether mm -hmm. not McKenna doesn't trust Piggott to do the job he wants, not really had much of an impact this season, as we mentioned last night's show. Maybe there's an argument there. But to keep playing Norwood over and over suggests to me that he trusts him in that role, knows that he can score goals. He's got a great little header, didn't he, last week against Shrewsbury. Yep. Gets in at the near post, flicked it in. I just wonder whether or not he could be part of the plans. I've always thought he would he would move on, but I just wonder now that we keep seeing him over Pigger, a player with a longer contract than him, may, su may suggest something. But maybe I'm reading too much into it, and we know how much Ashton likes player trading. He'll probably retain him to 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 sell for some kind of nominal fee, maybe. Yeah, Either or. Either or. Yeah. <laughs> well, selling him for a nominal fee, let's say, let's just plug a figure, £10,000. It's 10000 more than you would if you just let him walk. Um, so... It, well, there is sense. Sort of, I would, yeah, I would, I would, well, we've got him for nothing, didn't we? So, I mean, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm probably a six figure fee, 100 grand. Well, we got Walton for 100 grand, didn't we? So, yeah, what's well, normal fees these days in the football landscape post 50,000? I, I don't know. It, it depends <laughs> on what clubs are interested in. You know, he's obviously yeah. the earlier part of 30s, he's a player that's had injury record, you know, but he can yeah. score goals and he, as he proved yeah. last week and he's got to get the service in into him. It's another good opportunity for him. Bon and Piggott make up the two strugglers on the bench out of the two. Mm. As we're into this part of the season, as uh, Andy says, best time to give youngsters, uh, the experience of the youngsters, sorry, uh, is now. Nothing, nothing depends on the remaining games. So with that in mind, who do you want to see from, from the bench when the time comes? Do you want to see a Macaulay Bond that may well be on his back to QPR and, and the club already decided on what they want to do with him? Or would you mm. like to see a Joe Piggott to keep giving him the opportunities to see if he can right. turn the... I, I, I think the fact that Macaulay hasn't started again speaks volumes. He's just not going to be here next season, is he? I don't believe so, no. <laughs> why would we... You know, we keep saying this. Why would we pay a transfer fee? You know, a pretty lumpy one at that. 
for someone who scored only once since October. So I think that's the end of McCauley, sadly, because I'd love to have seen him. You know, uh, I, I thought he'd be played a year and 20 goals. That was my, I mean, that was a better prediction what Rich thought. Another loan deal might be in the offering and another chance to come back and, and see if he can yeah, capture maybe. some magic. Yeah. Uh, that, that in. Just, I just want to remind you of one that Rich thought he would be played of the year with 20 goals. Sorry. Um, actually, so, we're, so we're all wrong this year. Is that what you're saying? We're all very <laughs> yeah, much yeah. wrong. There we, we go. We won't say who your one was. <laughs> um, who would I like to see off the bench? Actually, none of them. I'd quite like to see El Mazzuni come in and maybe see if he could play one of those central roles or could he play one of those because uh, uh, he's a 10 at heart isn't he Mizzouni? whether or not he I could so. yeah that's what we've always told whether or not he could come off the bench and play one of the attacking roles for an Aluko or Selena at some point because there's like he's another uh you know we're seeing a debut of an academy kid today now Miz has come in from the academy as well someone else again who's been playing in central mm-hmm. football um doesn't seem to cut through here is he out of contract in the in the summer or has he got another he's still got a way to go who sorry it? Elmiz. He's just on a new three year deal, didn't he? Oh, he's Middles, done a new three year deal. Uh, he was one of the, the players along with Dan Ashton that signed a new extension under Paul right. Cook. Right, with you, with you. So, whether or not he'll be here next season, I don't know. Again, player trading is <laughs> the big oh. thing that we're going to see in the summer. Um, but I'd like to see him come on. Um, he had a pretty awful first half of Central Court at Hillsborough, then suddenly picked up and was quite good. And people were going, he could be playing the match. into it. And he got subbed. <laughs> <laughs> as is so often uh, the case isn't it yeah uh, Heidi so glad we can watch on Sky didn't have time to travel to New York this week um, I, I, don't, I don't want to see Penny particularly I don't want to see Carol this is not the game for Carol this you need big T in there <laughs> but again if if, if you're fearing if you're fearing, fearing that Tom McCauley Bond's time is coming to an end at Portman Road I, I, I would put Tom Carroll in that sentence as well because he's offered absolutely nothing this campaign yeah. No, absolutely not. He's too lightweight for us, you know, actual fact. I really don't like the argument where people go, well, if you played in the Championship or the Premier League, if you say... I do player. believe that. Do you believe I do that? Be- I believe if a player like him, he is proven when he's given the time, he can find a pass. Uh, and unlike previous players who have featured for, you know, for us that have had this label put to him as well, if he played at a higher level, I truly believe Tom Carroll is one of those players that... I'm not saying names. That um, if he had point. time, if he had time, I think he would because he's a he's a player that, that thrives with the time to look up and 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 pick out that pass, mm. which in League One up. doesn't get, do you? You, no. you get you get Ollie Rathbones, you know, nipping at your heels as as, yeah. as will be the case That's this afternoon. True. Someone did say to, someone who did watch a lot of Tottenham Academy football when he was coming through, Carol, of which Al McKenna knows him, which sometimes mm-hmm. makes me think. He might he might hold on to him, but he did say he's going to be too lightweight for you in League One, and that's yeah, it really has proved it. He's one of these players, Carol, that kind of has to deceive a little bit. He looks good. He's on his toes. He gets the ball. He's looking forward options. Goes back to the keeper. And you have to start the process again. At least with Tyreek, he's looking for that forward pass. I'm going to get it forward. And you then take, the, we start the attack from there. He's just a bit too negative for me, Carol. And the fact that he was hauled at half time against Bleeding Barrow speaks volumes, doesn't it? It does a little bit, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Ipswich Jules, Nord keeps featuring because of lack of options. He clearly doesn't fit, see, a feature, see a future for Piggott and possibly Bond, which is why they don't feature. Yeah, uh, Leighton Durant got a feeling Nord will get sent off today. Oh, dear. <laughs> Where's Leighton pulled that one from? Oh, dear, Leighton. <laughs> well, stick Leighton. a fire on before he gets yeah. off there. Mark Wall, how good would it be for Baggett to score from a corner oh, today? Yeah. Here's hoping. Imagine. Come on, you boo. Can you imagine? He makes his debut scores for a set piece. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so really. behind the striker today is uh, Guinevere is a set of balls and the ones that were pulled out were Luco and Selena, yeah. two yeah. players that could be a partnership that could feature different things. But Luco, as we keep saying, yet to have an assist. Let's look at Selena first and foremost. Mm. Um, I know this season's a dead rubber at this point, Matt, mm. but these are the games you loan versus at Selena with all that comes with it in terms of the, the fees and the monies, etc., etc., These are the games today to go out and win them for your team. This is why you have Burst and Selena yes. in your squad. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean... Live on Sky. Yep, yeah. The only, you know, one of the only games featured today against yeah. a side that's a measuring stick in the division. Like, it's Rotherham. Fans are, fans of Collins Age will, 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 will shudder and, and be hurt me saying that. But it's the case. Until we beat Rotherham, and continue mm. to beat Rotherham, they will always be a measuring stick at this at, at this at this yeah. level. You're These right, are the you're games. Right. Right today, in terms Fantastic. of like in terms of top, you know, a lot of the matches were yesterday. Now, if he suddenly scored the crew goal today <laughs> that he got at Portman Road, that'd be played 
Sky Sports News, having been on Sky, right through till probably t- t- tomorrow evening, I would have thought. Absolutely. It, yeah. He has flattered, again, someone else who's flattered to deceive in these really big matches. The big one was Sunderland, wasn't it? At the Stadium of Light when he had a couple of chances there and um, it didn't happen. He's been really good against the, 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 the teams towards the bottom end of the table, as you'd expect. That's where the frustration, I think, and where the, the, the fan base is divided. He gets a lot of love from the fan base. Great. I'm a big fan of him as well. But he's never committed to town. He's always been a lone player. Um, now, whether or not he wants to sign in the summer, we'll have to wait and see whether or not a deal can be done there. But this is the kind of game where McKenna will look at him and go, yep, Cena won us those three points. This is what we could see as we try and progress to the title ourselves, all the top two next season, which has got to yeah. be the aim. And you need, we said before, so then it was the X factor for top two for Ipswich this season. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anyone, you know, you don't pay 20 grand on wages a week and take someone off the hands of Dijon who were in the French league playing P- PSG last season to be pissing about in 10th, which is where we are, unfortunately. No. And that's been the frustration for many fans with, with, yeah. with Bursant. You're right. He is loved by many. I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Bursant myself. But in the big games, big game Bursant, as Coxie calls him on a match day ticket, this is where you know it might be a dead rubber, but you've got to go in uh, and be the superstar. You know, these players like Bursan, who are the superstars, who have the air of you know confidence and swagger, yeah. these are the games you make your mark because no, it's, still being, it's being, I mean, it, you're live on Sky, therefore it's being shown obviously live around Europe, around well. the world. I, I do think, like, we've seen, I do think like he could end up maybe going to a top flight side in the Bundesliga or somewhere like that, actually, and, unless, he, unless he's really. He's given the option. He's really set on Ipswich, but for his own career, really, you would want to be playing in the top flight. I would have thought, and I feel like maybe the, the you know he's played in the top flight in Holland, he's played in the top flight in France. Easily a Bundesliga club could come in for him. I, I don't know why I think that, but that's that's what I think. Um, so yeah, he'll be looking for his own career to 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 put in the shop window today. Absolutely, absolutely. Matt Fishman, Dobby coming down next season is not a given. No season is a given. Ask Wigan that last year. They were fighting this this point to stay in the division. Yeah. Fighting tooth and now, uh, you know, no mm. season is a given, and I don't think many people, if anybody, really had Wigan possibly winning the winning the title, except, Wig- we except did, Wigan fans. Yeah, we debated this with Barry, didn't we, in the pre we the, did. season show? And I was like, I kind of said, well, they could do all right. I said, but I thought Bolton might push on a bit further than what they were. And he goes, no, 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 put us down as dark horses. That wily old Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Wiley old Barry. Uh, Mike D, we're getting MK fans. Uh, sorry, we're getting MK Dons on Sky today too. A feat of League One football. Yeah. Tell me you don't have the cup final without telling me you don't have the cup final. Um, Because they, they can't have the cup final if they're showing League One football today. Isn't it, <laughs> isn't it the cup final today? Liverpool fans? This, is it today or tomorrow? Cup semi. Cup semi. Cup semi? Fucking yes. See, I'm well out of touch with Premier League football. Well yes. out of touch. Oh, yeah. I don't even look at the championship until we're on the verge of going back there. Yeah, me I too. The, I don't see the point. I don't see the point of depressing myself at Luton winning this weekend. I see that tweet come up and I was like... It's uh, it's Man City oh, Liverpool today. It's Man City Cup Liverpool. semi-final. Yeah, first one. Mm. At Wembley. Mm. ITV nonsense. and... Of course, ITV and BBC, one or the other. Mm. That's nonsense. Well, you got to... You know, it's the money game. You've got, you know, you don't, well, don't, they did talk about that, didn't they? And saying like, oh, like, why do we have to slip down to London when we're both in the northwest? Well, you couldn't have Liverpool fans going to Old Trafford, could you? So they would probably, or, or uh, Man City or something like that, wouldn't, would, couldn't play at the Etihad and wouldn't play at Old Trafford. So the next best option is Aston Villa, which holds exactly half of what Wembley does. Everyone wants to go to Wembley to earn a pound note, let me tell you. Regardless of what fans think. Uh, semi because of at 3.30, we're going at 5, MK on at 7.30. How can anyone watch all those games? Like, I wouldn't have the appetite to watch. The crunch, the crunch will. Yeah, the country would be. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mike the Fisherman, I'm on the, fen- I'm on the fence with Selena. One good game in three. We need yeah. more from. I think, lot, I think a lot of fans are like that. I think a lot of fans are like that. I mean, how can you not like Selena? I love Flair players. As I always said, you know, Dalian Atkins was one of my favourite ever players. And Selena kind of, he's, he's someone who gets you off your, off your seat and on your feet and you think things are going to happen. But it's just been few and far between this season, sadly. But he's had health issues as well. We know that. So maybe there was an argument there not to take him in the first place. But, you know. Well, yeah. But, you know. Um, so, Aluko, we talked about Selena. Aluko is partner in the number 10 role. I'd love an assist today. Or, or well, a what goal else from... he divides? He divides opinions. Funny. Chaplin seems to be the only one who doesn't divide opinion in these roles, isn't he? He's like, you know, he's, he's had a pretty... I mean, he's had, a, he's had an average season. I think he's scored goals. He's had assists. Aluko, 
Yeah, I th- there's something about Aluko. Just when he gets on the ball, he's probably the opposite to what Carroll is. He gets on the ball, he's trying to make something happen. He's not trying to pass backwards or recycle the possession, as you say, mine. He's trying to get things forward. I sometimes think he is the key pass that then gets the moves going. You take that out of the equation, then you, you, you're missing it. Like, you know, you don't, you, you, you don't really know what you've missed until it's not there. Like when Morsey didn't play in them four games, he was like, oh, God, mm. you're missing Morsey. Yeah, you know, there's no one to take on that role. Carroll come in. So I think with Aluko, you know, I know Colin's a big fan and Colin's at the game today, so he'll be happy about that. Um, I think he'll get another deal with Aluko. I, I certainly think he'll get another year. He's a, uh, you know, a consummate pro, keeps himself fit, played at the top level. They're gold dust in league one, those kind of players. Like I've said last night, I feel like he's probably a really good presence around the training ground and in the dressing room. Some of that Elkham Baggett can look up to in terms of experience and where he's Model playing. pro. Yeah. They're difficult to get, I would say, in League One League. So they want to stay around the Premier League and the Championship as much as they can. So yeah, it, it could be an option off the bench next season. But look, look how they've recycled tens this all this season. Selena, the Chapman, Aluko, whoever else might be in the, in the mix. Do you think he deserves a new deal? Because Mark Walsh just said that he's got a great tempo and always looking to get forward. Deserves a new yeah. deal. Has he done enough to deserve? Oh, whether not, yeah, whether or not that deserves. I mean, that, I think Mark, that's probably his. You know, he's objective and aim for the game <laughs> from McKenna. Um, and there's other players that can do that, that we could easily sign, that could would be younger. But, like I say, he brings, he brings the experience. So, yeah, I, th- I, think, he's had a, I think he's had a good season. Hey, when you actually look at he, the start of the season, when the Newport game, and everyone was going, he was crap. What we signed him for? This is Mark Fish 2.0. He was rusty, though, wasn't he? I, yeah, I he was rusty. That after hell. the Newport game. He was a real curveball signing for me when I saw his name. You know, I chuckled when I saw it. Like I say, he was the first person I ever interviewed at the FA, at an England youth match. So I chuckled when I saw he was at Portman Road. Now, it came out, kind of came out of nowhere. But I think it's been a good, I certainly think it's been a good signing. Unfortunately, you know, you put that signing into the mix with everybody else. And it hasn't got us to where we wanted to. In isolation, I think it's been a good signing. But we, we're not in the top six. So everyone's got to hold their hands up there. Mike D, get the barbecue going, gov out in the sun, four games on, like the World Cup. Yeah, but not many people care about... <laughs> he looks buzzing today, isn't he? He's hit them Baileys, I reckon. He's still got that Christmas Baileys under, in, in the cabinet. Um, El- uh, Hello, Panda, Elkan Bagger, Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure many people from Indonesia will be watching yeah. with a, a keen eye uh, because he is one of their, one of their main up-and-coming stars, stars, isn't he? Well, this is interesting to me because I've always thought that like the reason Keane came to Ipswich was so we could tap in, we'd get promoted to the Premier League quickly was what Evans' thinking was. Mm. Then you tap into that Far East market, which is huge, huge, huge. It's why Man United go to places like Malaysia on yeah. summer tours because the, the, the global appeal is huge. Now, you you see like uh, Son at Tottenham. He can't even walk through the streets of Seoul in uh, South Korea without getting mobbed like an A-list Hollywood star. So we've not actually had that, that kind of appeal that could go to the Far East. King would have been that appeal to the Far East, the Man United group. All right, we're going to start looking at Ipswich now. So if you can retain Bagger can, and get through the divisions and get to the into the, the, the Premier League with him, you know, best case scenario, he's a future captain, right, in the next two, three, mm-hmm. four years. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Suddenly you've got global appeal in that market. In that market. Ipswich don't have that at the moment. But that's someone who could, you know, be the, the, the pathway to that. Elkin Bagger will become the first ever Indonesian to play in English professional football this afternoon. There you go. Wow. Pathmaker. Brilliant, brilliant. Set in history yeah. already, I love it. I love Absolutely. It. Love it. Right. We are done. Let's have some score predictions. Uh, we've got the poll. It's uh, 73% of people believe town will win today. 73% of people have been on the source early, it would seem. Um, because <laughs> yeah. that, over- that is confidence to the extreme. And Mark, well, before we get to scores, uh, Bagger has a million followers online, massive market town for town. Think of the shirt sales and might be. I've actually got to tell my 11 year old do his homework today. Boo! What Easter weekend in the half term? Get that in the bin. He's one of them, he's one of them bossy parents, selling pushy parents, might be. Yeah, yeah, get yeah. his work done. Yeah, it's just your town. Uh, what are you saying, Matt? What's your score prediction? What's your bold, Bobby Bold? Would be brave. <laughs> if I was gonna be bold, I'd say probably 2 0 town, but. I'm not bold in my predictions. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be another one-one. Okay, one-one. Which one, one. one. yeah, wouldn't be a bad result. I do think there is a, there is an opportunity there for it. Considering Rotherham are dodgy, there is pressure on them because they've kind of blown what I thought was going to be a title-winning campaign for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is pressure there, and you know, you know what happens when teams come and play Ipswich when there's no pressure, like Cambridge, <laughs> they end up winning one-nil. So 
we could do the same today, maybe. Absolutely. Usual. 2 1 town. Mark Wall, 2 0 Ipswich. Uh, Timor TV, go Ipswich. He said, oh, they also say Ipswich 3 1. Mike D, I wish I was a bossy parent. It's why he hasn't touched it for two weeks. He he's goes a, back he, Wednesday. He's got <laughs> Tuesday, Mike, and he's got Tuesday. Um, right, I'm going to say 2 0 town. Comfortable, okay. confident, dominant, real measuring stick of how far we've come from the previous time we, we, we faced Rotherham. Yes. That's my bold prediction. I was fuming after that game, you recall. Fuming. I was freezing and we lost. It was awful. I'm never doing a midweek game again, is what yeah, he said. I'm going to go Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, we're done. We're back at half time. Crunch will yep. join us from half time yeah. onwards. Don't forget the full time fans react show with a chance for you guys and girls to come on the South show and have your say in your own words on your platform, unfiltered and totally, utterly live. Enjoy. But we have five it. minutes to kick off. I'm off to get my ribs out of the smoker. Man is winning my life. Uh, and we'll see you all at half time. Adios. We're on a journey. Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted, but feels like.